Well, hallelujah, it is good to be in the house of the Lord every day. Amen? And we get to be in his presence, and we get to come together and release the anointing of God. There is a power when believers in the lordship of Jesus come together and begin to flow, and that power releases breakthrough in our lives. You see, we need Jesus, but Jesus made it so that we flow together. He never wanted us to be an island. Is that the truth? And that's why he sets us in families, and this house is a family, and we are here to not make you feel comfortable. We are here to encourage you to walk in the ways of God in every area of our lives. That means flesh gets to die, and the Spirit of God gets to come forth because that's what gets us victory every time. Amen? So, Father, we do come before you, and we thank you so much. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for opening our hearts to receive the Word of God. I thank you for bringing forth transformation in every area of our lives. I thank you for exposing everything that needs to be exposed in our lives with your perfect love to pull us up, Lord God, and pull us out of any scheme or plan of the enemy, and we thank you that we walk in the fullness of your wisdom every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Well, you know, this week, I was, you know, as I'm reading through the word, I'm reading through Luke chapter 8, and that's what I'm going to share a little bit from this morning, and in Luke 8, there's some things that, that transpire, and when I got to the end of the chapter, the Lord said, understand that to, to walk in everything that it, it talks about in this chapter, you have to get the first part of the chapter, so don't you want to know what the first part of the chapter is in Luke 8? It tells us a, a parable, and it's about the sower. Okay, and Jesus explains it, and I'm going to read this from the New King James, and it's Luke starting with chapter 8, verse 11, and it says, Now, the parable is this, the seed is the word of God, understand, when he's talking about a parable, the seed is God's word, it works every time, amen, the seed is never ever the problem. The Word of God is never the problem. Oh, I tried it and it just didn't work for me. No. That is a, a wrong way of thinking. That's straight from the pit of hell. Kick it out the door in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 12. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the Word out of their hearts. Least they should believe and be saved. So they hear the Word, but before it can really get in there. How many of you know we have an adversary? He walks around like, like, he is not the roar, he is not the Lion of Judah. He tries to walk around like it. He walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But we are found in Christ Jesus, so we're off limits to him. Amen? See, I believe that. So I know I'm off limits to him. If you doubt that, then guess what? He knows that he's got a foothold that he can get in there and he can just ha wreak some havoc with you. Not here, amen. Verse 13. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root. Hmm. So they receive the word. They're like, yes, thank you, Lord. But there's no root in there. Who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. In James, it tells us that it is the implanted word of God that is able to save our souls. We know our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. That's why we don't let our mind, our will, or our emotions, our itty-bitty feelings dictate and control what we're going to think, how we're going to speak, and what we're going to do. Are we? Oh, man. Y'all, no, we're not. Hallelujah. You better say that like you mean it. Amen? Then verse 14. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with the cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. So, you know, you can hear the word, but if you walk out the door and you begin to think about, well, you know, I'm having issues with my spouse and things aren't wor working right, and my kids are this way, and my job is this, and I hate my job, and you know, all those things, then guess what? It's going to be really hard to step into the fullness that God wants you to step into, to go into those places and release pure fruit. 
And fruit is what changes every area. And we are created to be fruit releasers, not fruity and nutty. Fruit releasers. Amen? All right. Woo, let's get to the good soil. Verse 15. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, here's the first key, keep it. They hear it, and they keep it, and they bear fruit with patience. Understand what that word patience means. Usually another word that's used for it is a word called long-suffering. That means you press into it. You keep doing it. Okay, I, I heard a definition for uh, character that I really, really liked. And it is doing what you know you are to do with enthusiasm long after the excitement has left to do it. So, you know, how many of you have gotten a new job and you're like, woo, you, yay, yes, I love my job. It's so much fun. Everybody's great. It's wonderful. And then you get like, oh, I don't know, six months, a year into it. And it's like, these people are hateful. They're mean. They're, I hate my job. Everybody, blah, blah. you know, how many of you done? Are you still doing your job with enthusiasm, even though you are not excited necessarily about the mean people you have to deal with all the time? I'm just telling you. Are, are we doing things God's way in this house? <laughs> are we doing things God's way in this house? Oh, now you're convincing me. Hallelujah. If you can't convince me, don't you think for one second that the enemy's going to buy that? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing God's way. And the enemy's like, yeah, boo, yeah, let me in. <laughs> they're, not, they're not steadfast about it. We're about getting steadfast and doing things God's way in this house and not in the flesh. Amen? All right, so understand that good ground produces in the earth like Jesus produces in the earth, okay? Jesus produces always good fruit in the earth. So understand that let's, just from, just from this chapter alone, okay, let's see what good fruit produces, all right? Good fruit produces, and we're talking about Jesus here, what did he do? He calmed the storm, when he said, let us get in the boat and cross over to the other side. There was enough power in that word to get them across to the other side. Whether a storm came up or whether other things happened, that word was enough for them to stand on to get to the other side of the lake. Is that true? All right, so the question is, is have we lost, when storms come into our life, when things happen that we don't like or we're not happy about, have we lost our faith in Jesus because of the, the, the storm? And have we now chosen to fight the fight in the flesh and make it all about me? Make it all about what hurt me. Make it all about what I don't like. Make it all about what they're doing to me. That will get you into a spiral cycle that will not help you to be the overcomer that your God has made you to become. That's who you are. You're an overcomer. You're above only and not beneath. You're the head. You are not the tail. You are blessed going in and blessed coming out. I don't care what the storm looks like. Your God is for you, and because your God is for you, there is nothing that can be against you. Do we believe this? Oh, come on. We better, hallelujah. All right, so that's the first one. Now, good ground, okay, produces good fruit. The next thing Jesus does is he delivers this dude of demons, Okay, they get to the other side, get out of the boat, and there's this guy for a long time. I mean, he's running around naked. He's running in chains. They're trying to chain him. He's breaking out of the chains. I mean, this dude is seriously demonized. He is demon-possessed, all right? And Jesus came, and he delivered him, set him free. And that is what our God will do. So we have to look, and, you know, in this case, when someone's coming against us, and they're coming and they're saying things that do not line up with the word of God. And they're speaking things. We've got to start looking who or what's influencing them. You know, could it be demonic? 
You know, sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's just like, man, you need to, like, change your flesh, <laughs> you know, and, and change and learn how not to do these things. But it could be demonic. So that's why it's so important that we hit certain things, not from a place of it hurt me, what they're saying is hurting me, but from a place of going after the enemy and binding. The keys of the kingdom are binding and loosing, okay? So we have been given the authority to bind on this earth and it is bound, and to loose the presence of God, and it is loose. So it's very important that we learn how to do that and that we choose to do it because information, okay, what is it? Remember, information is nothing unless you put action to it. Let's do it biblically. Be hearers of the word and doers also. Okay, so very, very important. Hallelujah, our God is good. So then, now this guy that Jesus delivers, uh, he comes to Jesus, and I mean, wow, you think about this. You have been demon-possessed for a really long time, and he is begging Jesus, let me come with you. Oh, man, Jesus, I just want to be around you all the time. Around you, I am set free. I feel good. You know what Jesus tells him? No, no. I mean, you think about when you really want to do something, and he's just come out of a really bad place. And Jesus is like, no, I want you to go home, and I want you to tell your family what has happened to you and how you've been set free. And we know he does it. You know, he doesn't get all hurt because he can't do what he wants to do and be around who he wants to be and be in the position that he wants to be. He takes the assignment that God gives him, and he goes and does it. That's what we have to be about. It's not always about you know, us doing what we want to do. It is about us doing what Jesus tells us to do every single day, very consistently. All right, then next, he heals, he heals uh, the woman with the issue of blood. Remember that? She comes and she presses through the crowd and she touches the hem of his garment. And what's interesting, the hem of the garment, there was tassels on that garment, and it was a prayer shawl, actually. And what that uh, symbolized in the Jewish culture, was all the commandments, the covenant, the promises of God, okay? So she was literally grabbing a hold of the covenant of God that said, you know what? I send my healing to you. We have that today. We have the covenant that has been cut in his blood, and we can grab a hold of that and take and receive Everything that our Jesus has purchased for us, deliverance, forgiveness of sins, healing, wholeness, protection, we can walk in it. And then lastly, Jesus raises the dead, all right? You know, what's interesting is, you know, he healed the woman with the issue of blood. He was not impressed that, oh man, she's been this way a long time. This is going to take a while. No, 12 years with an issue of blood and in an instant healed. That's who our God is. And then he gets to the, the little girl's house. She's already dead. She's 12 years old. And Jesus is just like, oh, man, don't fear. Don't let fear come in and influence you. And he speaks the word, wake up. And she wakes up. That's some fruit. That's some really good fruit, people. And we have been created to release that same fruit into every area that we touch in this earth. And to me, that is so exciting. But the key is, you know, we don't yield to fear. We keep our faith and we keep our trust in the promises of God. We don't react from fear when something comes up. You see, I fully understand that there is something called a coronavirus. I am not impressed by it, in case you wanted to know, okay? Um, I have already, and we have from this house, and I know many of you have been joining with us, weeks ago declared that thing dead. As far as I'm concerned, it is stripped of all its power and its authority. Whatever symptoms that are still out there is a lie from the enemy. It's dead, and it's gone. And that is where I'm standing. Amen? So it's been stripped of its, its uh, to me, its power and its authority, and I can walk in the protection of Almighty God. The death blow's already been given. Just like Jesus at the cross, 
gave the enemy the death blow so that he can no longer rule and reign over us, but that we can rule and reign in this earth. You see, but the enemy likes to try to convince us that he has not been stripped of his power. And if he can get us to believe a lie, we'll step into fear and walk in that. And we'll open up the door for him to enact crazy stuff in our lives that God never intended for us to walk in. I want to read um, from a couple different versions here. And this is in the uh, uh, today, wait, today's English version. And it says, The seeds that fell in good soil... Stand for those who hear the message and retain it in a good and obedient heart. Obedient heart. See, there's a process of taking the word of God and choosing to obey the word of God. God desires obedience over sacrifice. He just wants us to take his word at face value and obey what he tells us to do. Amen? With an obedient heart. And they persist until they bear fruit. Are we persisting no matter what? Are we not letting the world influence us? Letting what our spouse has said. Letting what our co-workers have said. Letting what teachers have said over us. Are we persisting in that? Or are we persisting in producing the fruit that our God has called us to produce? In the Message Bible it says, But the seed in the good earth... These are the good hearts who seize the word. There is a process that we have to take this word, like we mean business, not like, oh, let's see, oh, I have to read the word today. Oh, yeah, doesn't mean anything to me. No, seize the word, like, Jesus, Holy Spirit, what you got for me today? Because I know it's life. Because your word is active and it is powerful. It's able to discern. It's able to to cut off every plan of the enemy from my life, from my family life, from, from wherever I set my foot. Hallelujah. See, I believe it. So there's an excitement about getting into the Word of God and getting God's heart and getting God's plan for every situation. We come across people every single day that need Jesus. We come across people every single day that need the miracle of God. And it is up to us. He has given us this privilege and this honor in this earth to release his word and his plan. And it first has to start with us seizing it for ourselves and getting it in our hearts. Whew, amen? That's fun. Seize, where am I? Okay. Good hearts who seize the word and hold on no matter what. No matter what it looks like. No matter, you know, there have been times when we have prayed something and the exact opposite has happened. And you're like, what is going on? (laughs) You know, I am declaring this, and it's like, woo, the exact opposite. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You going to stay the course? Are you going to take the word of God and say, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care, enemy, how you try to get me to look at the waves instead of at the promises of God. I know who my God is, and if I have to stand in this spot and declare the word of God, I will do it until it comes forth. Amen? Persistence. Persistence. Hold on to the word no matter what. Sticking with it until there's a harvest. Because I'm here to tell you, there is harvest always coming. Always. So we've got to stay focused in that. Hallelujah. All right, are you ready? Ready for some fun now? All right. You got your still toe boots on? Woo, we're going to have fun now. <laughs> All right. So why, and this came up to me. I'm like, God, why is it that, like, good seed, good fruit takes so long to grow? And it's like the bad seed is just like, ah, it's up like the next day. Do you ever have a garden? And, okay, I'm, I'm diligent in Jesus' name, so I'm not going to speak that because this year, man, weeding is like my thing. Hallelujah. Yeah, with my garden. But anyway, did you ever notice like you're away for a few days and you come back and it's raining so you can't do it? And, and like, by the end of the week, it's like your plant that you want to produce the fruit, you can't see them. No, there's weeds. There's weeds all over. It's like, what? Where did you come from? You know? I'm like, why is that? Wouldn't it be so much easier if just, 
you know, weeds grow overnight, and the fruit takes months. What's up with that, Lord? Well, what is up with that, you know? Because we, we have to come to realize that anything that produces good fruit takes cultivating, okay? It takes cultivating. You've got to weed it. You've got to watch over it. You've got to water it. You've got to protect it. You know, I always, I, I think it's interesting that the bunnies never want to eat my weeds down. No, no. They want to eat the good stuff where the fruit's going to come. Uh-huh. Anybody? The deer. No, they don't eat the weeds. No, they go straight for the plants that are going to produce the fruit. What's up with that? Well, how do you think the enemy is? He's always going after the word. He's always trying to get you to focus on the wrong thing. And we're wiser than that. Hallelujah. We've got the word of God. We've got the wisdom of God. Let's choose to believe God above what things look like and those types of things, okay? So good fruit. I mean, it's to be protected. We've got to protect our time with God because the enemy will keep us so busy that we won't have time for the word. He'll, he'll keep us, well, yeah, I'll get to that, get to that later. And, and then by the time you go to bed, you're too tired to even talk to the Lord. You know, oh, Lord, thank you for this day. And you're out, okay? You've got to protect and take time to cultivate that word within you. Amen? Mm. Hallelujah. All right. So, to, to produce good fruit, let's, let's talk about some keys here. It takes diligence and it takes effort, okay? It's a choice to put our hand to the plow, just like you shared. You know, you, we put our hand to the plow. In Luke, it tells us, or I'm sorry, in John, the very next chapter, it tells us, he who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So therefore, it's about us staying focused in where God is moving us forward, moving us forward in his ways. You know, we get excited about the new things of God and, you know, all that. But a lot of the new things of God is how you treating your spouse this week, how you treating your coworkers, how diligent and honest with integrity and character, are you working your job this week? How are you treating people? Mm-hmm. I'm just telling you how it is. Hallelujah. How are we meditating on the word of God to release and to trust God? Meditate. You know what meditate means? It means we take the word of God and we say it over and over and over again in our heads. We say what God says. Amen. I encourage you. Um, well, we haven't had it for a while, but we have, you know, who I am in Christ. You better know who you are in Christ. You better know I am accepted. I am, in lo I am loved by my God. I am favored of God, and he causes man to favor me also. You better be speaking these things because that's going to release a trust in God, and you're not going to be moved by situations that people are doing against you, and you make them the enemy instead of recognize who the real enemy is, and that is the devil every time, okay? So producing good fruit means choosing to respond in every area of our lives by clinging, clinging to the word of God and doing it consistently, we must choose to do God's word on a consistent basis. It's not going to work if I choose to do it. Well, you know what? I'll do it for three days. And you know what? It just, no, it's not working. I'm done with that. I'm doing my own thing now. Oh, yeah? Oh, I'm going to tell them now because I gave them three days, God, for you to work on them. Now I'm going to work on them. I'll work them over. Good fight, good fight of faith. Let me fight them, Lord. And that, oh, come on. Don't you all sit there like, not me. No, no, I'm always sweet. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, let's keep it right. Let's keep it real. Because we are doers of the word, all right? And I understand. Do you remember? Uh, there, there was a foundation that needed to be built. And the foundation that was built are... It's those who do the will of God, those who do the word of God. They built their house on that. The, it's not that storms didn't come. Storms still came. It's just the house stood. 
Now those who chose not to build their house upon doing the word of God. Oh, storms came, guess what? The house didn't stand. Don't you blame God. Because there's some principles that we need to apply to our lives. All right? Then, producing good fruit. Choosing to make it about God's ways, trusting that we truly can turn everything over to him. Then we can show the right seed, so, so, sorry, not show, so the right seed into the situation. And we can do it from the very heart of God and not from a place of heart, not from a place of anger, frustration, rejection, you know, all those things that make us respond and react in sowing the same seed. Did you ever try to conquer an enemy of anger with anger? What happens? You just made it bigger, is what you did. So you better, you better learn God's ways, okay? So th there's a question that we need to ask ourselves, okay? And I learned this because, oh, I don't know, who was it? Well, who knows how many, how long ago it was, a few years. And there was a situation, and what had happened, uh, you know, in my dealings with some people in a particular job, Something had happened. I upset a coworker. I didn't know I did, but obviously I did. Because they would come in, and I can remember I was sharing something kind of, I don't know, encouraging, you know, about them to the other workers and how great they were. And all of a sudden, man, they came back, and they just ripped me apart. And I'm like, oh, wow, <laughs> where'd that come from? <laughs> and, you know, I'm just like, wow. And it kind of hurt. I was kind of a little upset about it. And, um... I'm just like, hmm. And I wanted to respond, but I felt the Lord say, you know what, you're not responding from the right place. Just take it, pray about it, release it. So I kind of didn't really listen. I got took it. I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, they'll get over it, and we'll figure it out. Well, the next day, even worse, and I mean, just, uh, I mean, was, was mean. <laughs> just being mean, being short, being disrespectful. And, I mean, now I'm just like, oh, okay, well, there's an issue now. And um, I, I kind of said something. I'm just like, you know, well, that's, that's not very nice. And, you know, why would you do that? And, I mean, it was just, you know, you know when somebody just wants to fight. So I'm just like, okay, now is not the time to deal with this. I'm just going to back up and, Lord, and here's what the Lord said. I told you to start praying about that. I told you to start taking authority. <laughs> oh, I am not, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you know, that night I just took it to prayer. And I'm like, Lord, right now I just bind the influence that's coming against them. Right now I take authority over, you know, whatever it is, uh, you know, that's trying to bring division to our friendship. And, you know, whether it be a marriage, whether it be a friendship, you know, whatever it might be, you want to have peaceful relations wherever you are. I mean, you're jingle-brained if you don't. I do. <laughs> Hallelujah. But um, so anyway, I took it to prayer. And the next day I went in. And it was kind of one of those things because, like, through, I started off the night thinking, okay, I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to, here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to discuss how they hurt me, how they made me feel devalued, how they made me feel disrespect, disrespected, what did I just make it all about? Oh, do you know Jesus never does that? <laughs> he never permits us to do. And he got a hold of me because that was, I was having a pity party. It's pretty much what I was having. And the Lord got a hold of me and said, okay, is that all, is that what you want to make it all about? Or do you want to change this situation? I was like, I want to change this situation. I want to heal this situation, Lord. He's like, okay, are you ready? I'm like, ready. He goes, you need to release it. And I'm like, before I let them know how they made me feel, please, God. Because <laughs> it was wrong. They were wrong, and they did it in front of people, and it was wrong, wrong, Lord. You know, we just want, we want to be all about right or wrong. And usually when I get in that attitude, the Lord always is just like, do you, do you want me to point out everything you did wrong to me? <laughs> 
no, I don't, Lord, thank you. I'll release it. And I did, you know. So anyway, I, I took time and I released it because I wanted God to change it. I wanted it to make him make it new. I wanted him to make it different. Yeah, you know, I didn't want it to stay that way. So, you know, I, the first thing we have to learn is we got to release the hurt and the wrong completely to God, okay? Um, there's this uh, tribe in Africa. I read this story. And what they do, the whole tribe, when somebody um, does something that is kind of mean or disrespectful to somebody, what they do is they call the whole tribe in, and the whole tribe judges them. Now, hear me out. The whole tribe judges them, and they start from the youngest up, and here's how it goes. The youngest one might be maybe five, six years old, walks up and says, I can remember whenever I was little sitting around the campfire, and I would sit on your lap, and you would hold me and keep me warm, and I remember you would tell me stories and teach me things. I can't believe that you would do something like that. Boom. The next one would come up maybe eight or nine years old, and I can remember when you taught me how to run the trails and how to hunt and how to see animals, and you, thank you so much, and you know, I just can't believe you do something like that. And then maybe somebody else would come, and if, I can remember whenever I was there, you taught me how to fish, and, you, and that's how it went. It was all about who they really were and not about the act of what they did. The, 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 the focus was on, this is who you are. I can't believe that's what you would do. And in, it, almost 100% of the time, the person never does that thing again. So see, it's just a change. It's learning how to release and see the good and not focus on the bad. And it's not that sometimes things don't need to be brought out, but it has to be brought out from a place of healing, not from a place of, I'm going to let you know how it hurt me, okay? So anyway, have to release hurt and the wrong completely to God. And one way that I know, I'm talking about me personally, one way that I know that I haven't is the feeling of, I have to let them know, how they deeply wounded me, and how they need to know it. They need to feel my pain. <laughs> Anybody else like that? Especially, I, I don't know why. Those that are closer to us, sometimes our spouses, we have just like, oh, I'm going to let you know my pain right now. <laughs> and we don't want to do that, you know. And, and here's the thing. I can't seem to get to a place of peace. It's just like it just won't get out of my mind, and I feel like I have to get it out. I have to get, oh, trust me. At that point, you better get it out, but you better get it out to the right person and not on another person, okay? So, and I realize, man, I am not truly trusting God to change this other person's life and what they did. And for, for him to be, for God, for you to convict that person you know, and to change them. Okay, secondly, have I spent time in prayer for the person? Have I been binding and breaking the influence of the enemy off of them that's causing them to just react and do goofy things? And again, I'm not talking about somebody who is physically abusive or vi verbally abusive, okay? Please get away from that. Get to a place of safety, and then you can pray. Okay, but um, you know, understand this is just in everyday life where people can be disrespectful or dishonoring, you know, that type of thing. So have I been breaking the influence that's causing the wrong reaction in them? Have I been asking God to move upon their heart to cause change in their lives? As I'm asking God to move upon my heart to bring the change that I need to. Because, you know, usually we always feel like I'm always right, you're wrong in this situation. Oh, trust me. God's always right. We always get to change. Okay? That's how, that's how that works out. All right? So am I able, before I even speak, am I able to speak from a place of healing and not hurt to bring the change where it needs to be brought? Not make it about me and what you did to me and how wrong you were, but make it about, God, what do you want to speak into this situation? 
How do you want to change it? And you know how good our God is? And this, he spoke this to me this week. I was, I was talking to somebody, and they had, done, they, they had done something goofy, you know, did a wrong response or, you know, that type of thing. And they said, they kept saying, I just feel so ashamed. I just feel so ashamed. And the Spirit of God rose up in me and said, tell them, don't feel ashamed. Feel like you need to change. So, you know, shame is not of God. Don't feel ashamed. Feel like you need to change because that's who our God is. And shame will keep us from changing. But if we'll say, no, my God, thank you for taking that shame. Now I'm coming to you. Help me to change. So I don't walk in this same way. And it's not that we still don't do the same activity again, but here's what I've learned. I've learned that when I choose to surrender to God, I may do that goofy thing again, but quicker and quicker, the Holy Spirit says, like, now what'd you do that for? Now what what'd we talk about? You formed a habit, and you always go to that reaction. How are we going to change this? And I'm just like, okay, you're right, Lord. Help me. Guess what he does? He helps us. Because that's who our God is all the time. Amen? But with the same grace that we receive from God, we want to sow that out. We want to be praying for people. We want to declaring, be declaring the word of God over their lives to see breakthrough. We want to see people delivered from the influence of the in enemy in reacting and responding wrong, whether it's to us or whether it's to somebody else. We're here to pray and to lift one another up. Amen? And we're going to see relationships healed and we're going to see that we're no longer going to be moved by the spirit of rejection and anger and frustration and fear like we did and we're not going to be speaking from that place but we're going to be speaking change into every atmosphere and we're going to see it line up in this earth like it is in heaven. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Father God, we come before you. We give you all glory. We give you all praise. Lord, we do come before you, and we ask that you would put a guard over our heart and over our mouth, that the meditations of our heart and what we speak would be pleasing to you, O Lord, our God. I thank you that you're changing us from the inside out, that, Father God, will not react, but will choose to surrender to you, will choose to release healing and health and wholeness into every situation. Your truth, Lord God, from your way to affect change in the person. Holy Spirit, help us to release so that we're not making it just about us and what happened to us, but we begin to make it about you and what you want to do to bring change and wholeness in the situation. In Jesus' name, we give you praise, and we thank you, Lord, for helping us. Hallelujah. Well, you know what? Go get them, and you get to walk it out because you just got a whole lot of information, so you get to put action to it.